2,000 years before our era, we leave Mesopotamia and move to the Nile Valley. Let's take a quick trip in time to see what went on there. Yes, things are running normally. Cities have been walled in. But their walls weren't able to hold back the massive influx of a people whom we call the Indo-Europeans for lack of a better idea of where they came from. These people would sweep across the Orient into Central Europe. For the moment, Hammurabi, king of Babylon, ruled Mesopotamia and dictated her laws. As we can see, the sun god Shemus handed down the civilized world's first legal code to Hammurabi in a very personal way, the year is 1750 before our era. If a man wrongfully curses another, he shall be put to death. There are three kinds of men. The slaves. The petty. And finally, men. If a man has debts, he may lend out his wife as repayment. But for a maximum of three years. Careless housewives are thrown into the river. If a man's wife is seen by another, then she must throw herself into the river. If a woman commits adultery, she shall be tied to her lover and both shall be thrown into the river. Led by Abraham, the Israelites left Ur and headed towards Canaan. The Achaeans from Mycenae attacked Crete, whose civilization was not to their taste. <laughs> Under Ramses II, Egypt shone with glory. This young pharaoh dispatched the first war communique by describing his near-defeated Kadesh as a great victory. Not long after, the Israelites left Egypt, and with them they took their belief in one god. BC, the Dorians invaded, armed with invincible iron. The Assyrians, in turn, became more warlike. By 1100 BC, Tyre, Sidon, and Byblos were the capitals of Phoenician prosperity. Their clever merchants succeeded in bringing west their culture and their alphabet, the one we use today. Assyria came into its own at last. The city of Asher ruled the Middle East. Sargon, Sennacherib, and Ashurbanipal terrorized their subjects. On his deathbed, the bloodthirsty Ashurbanipal had this to say, I have done no evil in the sight of God or man. No evil? One look at the evidence, gouged out eyes, cut off heads, would indicate that evil was his steady diet. 612 B.C., the Medes and the Babylonians are now allies. Led by Nebuchadnezzar, they lay siege to the city of Nineveh. It's an attack! Sound the alarm! It had been prophesied that Yahweh would make Nineveh as dry as a desert. Nebuchadnezzar turned the ruins of Babylon into the most important city of its time. Come closer, come closer, come and see my pottery, hear ye. My beautiful plates, bowls, and pottery. Right over here, we have the world's best dirtenware. Zarathustra preached in this city of wealth, but who came to hear what he had to say? Zarathustra taught that a wise and good man doesn't do to others what he wouldn't have done to himself, but who wanted to listen?
Each man is his own judge and can choose between good and evil, he said. But still, no one paid any attention. One day, Confucius would listen. And Jesus. The young Persian prince Cyrus was educated at Zarathustra's school. And when he decided to take the throne from his dull-witted cousin, Astyages the Mede, his methods were well thought out. Oh, I'm so sorry, cousin. I do hope I haven't hurt you. Uh, uh, huh? Uh, but, 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 oh. Can I light it now? Huh? Uh, couldn't I light it up for you, Your Majesty? What? Oh, no, that's disgusting. As Zarathustra taught, make friends of your enemies. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar was succeeded by Nabonidus, whose son, Balthazar, was not exactly loved by the people. <laughs> <laughs> Make way! Huh? Oh, uh. What's going on? Oh! Oh! With Balthazar out of the way, Nabonidus left the city to take up his new post as provincial governor. Once Babylon was conquered, all of Mesopotamia came under Cyrus's control. The Jews were now free to return to Jerusalem and rebuild their temple. Cyrus returned the remains of their treasures stolen under Nebuchadnezzar. The Israelites to whom he spoke in Yahweh's name thought of him as their Messiah. For the first time in history, conquered cities were not looted, their inhabitants left unharmed, and a conqueror showed clemency. It was the birth of the world's first empire. Then Smerdis, the magus, an imposter, usurped the Persian throne, and seven of the royal princes decided to eliminate him. Whoever's horse whinnied first would have to carry out the task. And so we come to Darius. to decide to win -y. This is Darius the First. There was rebellion throughout the land. Darius took a firm stand against it. I'll show him what stuff I'm made of. Oh, oh, what are you waiting for? Pulverize him. I can't fight for you. Bash him for crying out loud. He's exhausted. Put him in the barn and take care of him. Let me! That's mine! Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, it's mine! 
Papa, he's not fair. Please let me. I want to play with you, too. <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do about that. Yippee! Yippee! <laughs> yes? The master, someone is here for you. Please come quickly. A very important visitor is here. Very well. from Lebanon, teak from India, gold from Sardis, lapis lazuli from Sogdiana, turquoise, silver, lead from Egypt, Ethiopian and Indian ivory, stone columns from Caria, Ionian stone cutters, Lydian goldsmiths, Babylonian bricklayers, decorators. At Persopolis, Darius the Great built himself a palace of marvels. Twenty kingdoms. In the history of mankind, there had never been power to equal his. are pouring in better than usual. Here on the road to the capital, we see 500 Babylonian boys destined to become eunuchs, 400 mules, 100,000 sheep, Cavalier, you'd think he was born on horseback. Yippee, yay, yippee, 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 yay, yay. Yeah, yeah. Well done. <laughs> Our friend finally gets around to the reason for his visit. A fallen prince has raised a band of outlaws. They're fleecing the region. The king has put me in charge of maintaining law and order. I'll be setting up camp with my troops in the fortress on the hill. So if you ever need help, you know where to find us. What would you like, dear? That. Fine. Thanks. Hang on, son. You're going to get hurt if you fall. Yahoo! Master, band of outlaws has just attacked the caravan. We rode to their rescue. But the bandits outnumbered us. And we're the only ones left. Hey, hold it. There they are. <laughs> Hey, hey, Chief, listen to this. The first thing is to set fire to their stable. Then we grab their horses, and then we're off. It's as easy as pie. This way. Come on. Hey! <laughs> 
Where do you suppose my boy could have disappeared to? There. Yeah. It's him, all right. My boy's even broke my horse. A chip off the old block, that one. Dear friend, my friend, I can see that there's something the matter. I'm afraid it's my boy. He's extremely ill. I'm afraid he might die. This boy die? Oh, come now. If so, what's the good of all I know? Die. We'll just see about that. Make him drink that. The repairs are coming along nice. Oh, come. Must you leave right away? What if the bandits return? What battle plan do you have for that? Uh, well... Might as well show you my battle plan. You'll begin by lighting up a good fire. Your weapon will be a utensil like this one. Oh. Uh. There, now. No problem, child play, that's all. This is the way you must proceed. Huh? Uh. And if those bandits should ever attack again, it's simple. Look closely, boys. You see, smoke makes good signals when compressed and released. A lookout could see them from the fortress and sound the alarm. It's uh, genius, it's fantastic. Terrific. What will you do with all this stuff, Maestro? Uh, uh. Well, son, I'm going to show you. It's for the construction of our capital, Persepolis. What? A big city can't fit into that little drawing? That little drawing, my son, is a blueprint, you know. Now then, this is known as a sundial. It enables man to determine what time it is by noting the sun's height in the sky. One moment, if you please. Could you please explain it one more time, sir? This morning, the mark is here. At midday, over there. And there tonight. Master, His Majesty awaits you. Oh dear, never a moment's peace. We'll have to go on with this a bit later, son. Time flies. Hello, young Pierre. Although it was Darius himself who had ordered his servant to say, Remember Athens at mealtime, the emperor grew fed up with hearing it. He decided to invade Greece as a punishment for her many rebellions against him. It was another case of Goliath versus David. After Darius came Xerxes. After Xerxes, Artaxerxes. There were great battles, Marathon, Thermopylae, Salamis. No one was winning, so a truce was called. And within one century, a 20-year-old conqueror would return the Persians' visit. His name was Alexander the Great. On the tomb of Darius were written these words, erase nothing, destroy nothing. Ha <laughs> ha! 
334 BC, victory at Granicus. 333 BC, another victory at Isis. Once access to Persia was open to him, Alexander ignored her on purpose and besieged Tyre and Gaza. Then he headed for Egypt. According to Alexander, he had to go to Egypt to pay homage to his father. Did he really believe he was descended from the god Ammon, as his mother so often claimed? A strange, disturbing boy, that Alexander. 331 BC brought the victory when Darius III was defeated once again and for the last time. The gates of Babylon were thrown open and the people welcomed Alexander as they had once welcomed Darius. They came to offer magnificent gifts to the young conqueror. Jewels of intricate design, an astrologist to explain his art. The position of the stars is calculated precisely. Alexander was troubled. His father, though day. handsome and intelligent, was a drinker known for his short-lived, violent passions. His mother, a compulsive liar, never missed a chance to humiliate her royal husband, especially on the subject of their son, who she insisted was the son of the gods and not of man. So it's not surprising that Alexander was hot-headed, given to depressions and to excesses, perhaps even to patricide. He was brilliant, certainly, but also a strange and troubled man. No, you are not a god. The gods act alone. But that can't be the case with you, for you came to the throne thanks to the Macedonians. Oh, the nerve! After 10 years of campaigning, there were men who had marched 20,000 kilometers and wanted a rest. Well, I order this army to report immediately to the front. Once back in Babylon, utterly exhausted and probably sick with malaria, Alexander died at age 33. In his brief lifetime, he had achieved his dream to unite Greece and Persia, to combine the ancient East with dynamic Europe. From this intermingling of cultures would spring the Roman Empire. 